Today we're going from 0 to 100 on Stage Lights Effects. Let's do it. Hey everyone, Matthew Presley here, back with another episode of Stage Light 0 to 100. Today we're going to be covering all of Stage Light's effects from the EQ, compressor, the glitch 6, and what they're used for. We have 14 things to go through. Let's jump right in. I've got a basic project here with some tracks, and I went ahead and preloaded all the effects across all of these tracks. Let's start with the drums here. And we're, we're going to kick this off by going over some of the more bread and butter effects first. Let's start with Stage Light's EQ. Let's go ahead and kick it on here and explore it. You'll notice just by turning it on, you are you probably automatically hear all the settings here. Our EQ is very simple. You've got four bands. You've got a uh, low shelf, high shelf, and two mids. And you can control them just by selecting them and then adjusting the knobs on the side. If you take a look at the, look at the low shelf, you see I've got some frequency control, gain, I can boost or cut. And then the two mids have not only gain and frequency, but also bandwidth. So you can make it a, a broader or narrow curve. Quick tip, when you're trying to EQ things, I find it best to go ahead and stick to a narrow curve, boost all the way up, sweep around to find the frequency, maybe that you'll want to cut, for example, like on this drum machine, and then dip it down a little bit. Easy as that. Add, add or detract a little high shelf to your taste and you're good to go. Next one is a compressor. For those of you that aren't familiar with the compressor, it's all about controlling dynamics. Let's go ahead and kick it on. Here's how a compressor works. Audio is going to flow into the compressor and it's going to meet a threshold. I have a threshold here set at negative 24. What that means is, is when the audio crosses the, that particular decibel reading, it's going to use the ratio, which I have set around 4-1, to uh, not let the audio get louder. For every 4 decibels it goes above negative 24, it's only going to allow it to go up by 1 dB on the output. You can control how aggressive it attacks uh, on the threshold by adjusting the attack. And I'm setting this at roughly around 10 milliseconds. And you have a release from 1 millisecond all the way to 4 seconds if you want to do something really slow or smooth. Uh, last but not least, one of my favorite features here is a sidechain filter. And what that allows you to do is to target a specific band of frequencies that the compressor is going to react on. For example, if I turn it all the way down, you're going to hear the compressor get way more aggressive because I'm no longer cutting off the low ends. If I want the compressor to mainly affect the snare frequencies and above, I can shave off the low end to around 150, and now you hear the effect mostly on the snare. This area here will give you a little readout of your uh, curve and also your gain reduction. So it looks like I'm hitting around 6 to 7 dB. You can make up gain by turning up the make up gain slider here, like so. And that is how you use our compressor. Let's go on to a fun effect. This is a bit crusher and it does exactly what the name implies. It crushes bits. You've got three simple controls here. Let's go ahead and kick it on. I'm going to turn my wet mix all the way up. You have a noise that's going to introduce kind of digital hissy noise. And to hear that, you're going to want to turn down the bits. Currently our, our audio engine is set at 24 bits, but I can easily take it down to 16. If you can't hear that, keep taking it down further and you'll start to hear it get crunchy. Taking down the bits is one way. You can also divide the sample rate with the rate knob. And now it sounds like a maybe bad cell phone or a really lo-fi video game. This is a fun effect to use uh, if you really want to like totally change the tone of something. And remember, you can also automate, so you can maybe have it come on maybe on the back half of the beat or on a, on a break you're doing, that type of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. Let's move on to the effects we have on the bass. Get that going here. Now as you can see, I've got my bass, it's sample verse. I've already got it running through a compressor. Let's take a look at one of my other favorite threshold bass plugins, Ottawa. Ottawa is 
kind of like what it sounds like. Think of a, a, a wah pedal, but one that's controlled automatically by an input threshold. Let's turn it on and check it out. You'll notice just by turning it on with the settings, the bass is coming in, it's hitting the threshold first. Now, this is something you're gonna have to adjust based on the sound coming in. You'll notice if I turn it all the way on, the frequency isn't shifting because it's automatically just staying above the threshold. As I closely match the threshold with the peaks of the bass, it's doing that wah-wah sound. In addition to the threshold, you can adjust the attack and release of the wah. Dial it in how you like it. You know, you've got attack and release up to a second. You can also change the type of filter. That took all the bass out. I don't want to do that. But you've got um, a peak, notch, high shelf, and low shelf as well. You have resonance control and strength as well. Just to dial in how hard it's going to hit and which is going to control how wide the frequency is going to sweep. Dig in. Play around with it. It's a lot of fun to play with on guitars, bass, as you hear here, and uh, vocals too. Next, we've got a drive. This is a very simple plugin. It's good for adding subtle amounts of gain. Notice this is not subtle. I want to go ahead and dial this down a little bit because I just want this bass to be a little bit fuzzy. If you're into things a little bit more than fuzzy, like full on saturation, crank your gain here. Tap that overdrive for even more saturate. And you can also play with the threshold here and do some wave shaping. I'm going to stick to just having a little bit so it doesn't sound too clean. Last but not least on the bass, I've got a chorus. A chorus is basically like a doubler effect. Basically takes anything you feed into it, splits it into multiple signals, and varies the pitch. Ours is simple. Let's kick it on. We've got a pre-delay so that defaults to 50 milliseconds, it goes all the way up to 110. You may want the higher settings for you know vocals. You've also got a speed of the LFO. You can get wobbly really fast, so use your best judgment, dial in the speed and the full depth, which will really vary the pitch the higher it goes. And last but not least, a stereo button. This is going to make any mono signal you feed into it super wide sounding. Really cool, especially on like background vocals. I like to use it on my guitar myself. You get the idea. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the sample verse track here. Got a basic simple synth lead happening. First effect I have on here is auto filter. You can think of auto filter as a combination of the filters that we have built into all of our instruments and the LFOs combined. So you can apply that particular effect on any audio or any track you want. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Big change in the sound right in there. But let's take a look at what all it's doing. On the side here I have my LFO section where I can choose the waveform. I can uh, change the speed to really fast or really slow. The depth, as you can see, as the LFO goes up, the frequency goes left and right. You can turn beat sync off if you like to go freeform. I'll leave it there for now. On the right hand side, you've got your filter section here where you can change the type of filter and adjust the bass frequency and resonance. Lots of fun. Let's turn that off and let's go to our flanger. Our flanger is really simple and just gives you that classic flange sound. You've got some speed controls up to an insane 30 hertz all the way down to 0.1 hertz if you want something really slow and kind of whooshy. Uh, if you want something that syncs perfectly to your BPM, just enable the beat sync button and you can sync from one bar to quarter notes all the way to crazy fast 64th notes. But it's pretty good to have like the uh, frequency kind of, you know, varying based on your beat. Use it, use it as you, as you like. Let's go on to my next favorite feature, the gator. This is the same gator that is built into Electro Pulse. On the left hand side here, you've got how many steps from 8 to 16 to 32. 
and you can also set it between mono and stereo mode. That means it's going to gate the left and right channels independently. Let's turn it on and let's hear what we got. You probably notice I don't hear anything different. That's because I have everything turned on. Let's go ahead and turn these off here. And now I got this rhythmic kind of bouncing volume effect on my pattern. Let's go ahead and maybe switch it to mono and do 16s here. Kind of adds this kind of cool little uh, syncopated movement here. Let's hear that with drums real quick. Pretty cool. And we're going to stop right there. We still have many more effects to go through. Got any questions? Drop them in the comments below and we'll be here to answer them. If this has helped you and you like it, show us by hitting that like button. And if you want to be first to know when our next video drops, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Later.